Welcome to the Face to Face. I'm your host, Genevieve Carl Lefebvre. Face to Face is a bilingual series of videos recorded in Coquitlam. We acknowledge that Coquitlam is located on the ancestral and unceded territory of the Coquitlam. We thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and care for them along with the waters and all that is above and below. Today on the Face to Face, I am sitting with Samantha Madaloso from Crossroad Hospice Thrift Store. Welcome, Thank Samantha. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. I think you like to be called Sam. Yes. Perfect. So we'll go with Sam. So tell us a little bit about the mission and why uh, Crossroad decided to uh, fund um, a thrift store. Yes, yeah, so Crossroads Hospice Society was created 25 plus years ago and 20 years ago they opened up the uh, thrift store to help fund and operate the um, hospice um, and through that we were also able to start um, a grief and bereavement program recently over the last few years. We have a young adult bereavement program and we also have an adult program and the thrift store now helps support both of those and as well as the hospice. Excellent. So tell us about who are the people you're helping and uh, I know I was reading there's some beds, so many beds that uh, you guys are supporting. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about yeah. the So it's a 10 bed hospice. It's located just off of, off of Noons Creek Drive. Um, so there can be anywhere up to 10 people using the hospice and their families as well. And then with our bereavement programs, we have a counselor with our young adults and youth that will go out to high schools and do other activities with the um, kids and bring them together. And there's also adult programs and some of the adult programs involve going on walking groups and other outdoor activities and one-on-one -on -one, uh, grief counseling. Okay. So for those beds, if we go back to that mm -hmm. part, uh, is it long term or uh, because you, you said the word hospice? Yes. So can you elaborate, so can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Palliative care, end of life care, yeah. everybody's journey is different. So you'll have people who are in care for only a few days. So there's people who are only in care for a few months. Okay. So it's not long term, but we never know. Yeah. Okay. To go back to uh, the thrift store, mm -hmm. what sets you apart or what's different between you, your, the thrift store with Crossroad and another thrift store? Uh, so other thrift stores, you can find consignment ones. You can find other ones. Um, people know of bigger name ones that are for profit. For us, all of our money goes towards our grief improvement program and our 10-bed hospice. And then of course, I have to coffee for and tea for our volunteers and turning the lights on. Um, but our goal is to support Crossroads Hospice Society and the programs and all the services that we offer. So it feels nice that we're using donations that people are giving us. We're helping people who might not be able to afford high-end fashion um, or pots and pans, whatever it may be. And then we're taking that money and putting it to good use. Okay. So now, if someone wants to uh, visit you, you're located in the Tri-Cities. Yes. So yes. where are you located? We're just off uh, Barnett Highway, so we're okay. um, right by Rona, so nice and close. Okay, so in Port Moody? Uh, Coquitlam. Coquitlam. Right. Yeah. Okay, right, right by Rona. Border. Not so far from Coquitlam Centre. We're, yeah, almost across. basically across the street there. Yeah. Okay. If someone wants to do some donations, mm -hmm. where do they go? What's the hours? So, and do they do do they go to that location? Yes. So they all come to the location. Uh, so it's two seven eight zero Barnett Highway. We take donations at our back door there, uh, Tuesday through Saturday from ten a.m. until three p.m. Okay, Tuesday to Saturday. Yes. And the thrift store is open. Open Tuesday through Sunday. Tuesday. Nine Mondays off. Mondays off. It gives us time okay. to restock, give a good clean reorganize and change things up. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, customer service experience? When you go there, tell me what happened and what should we expect? Um, a busy store. Yes, um, okay. We have lots of volunteers. They'll be walking around with blue aprons and a name yep. to identify themselves. Mm -hmm. um, our day starts at eight o'clock, getting the day ready, getting stuff out, getting this, you know, floors cleaned, shelves mm -hmm. stocked. Um, and then at 9.30, there's a line about the door, um, and then the day starts, and it's, every day is different. No mm -hmm. day's the same. Um, we have, every day we have different departments on sale, and what we're getting known for is our Thrifty Thursdays. 
every Thursday, almost everything is half off. And mm -hmm. those are very busy days and they're great. We love the busy, chaotic, hectic, successful days. Cause that's just more money going towards our bereavement programs and to our hospice. Yes. I think drift thing is very in right now. I, mm -hmm. I don't have teenagers, but I know a lot of my, uh, ladies, friends, mm -hmm. um, my, my really good girlfriends, uh, have teenagers yeah. and that's what they do yeah. and I love that because they're giving back to the community mm -hmm. and they go around they go to different thrift store and they're always looking for a new one so how long have you been there so have you seen and why have you seen a difference you know throughout the years or yeah I've only been there a short time okay. I've been there only two years um, but it's been such a cool experience um, and you see it's it's also a community hub there's people who are there every day and the customers get to know each other. Yes. We get to know each other. So you, you come up with good rapport with people and, and it's very cool to see customers helping each other shop and volunteers helping customers shop. And it just, it's become a really cool community hub and you learn people's stories, um, as people are donating stuff through the back door or customers at the front door. So it's, um, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. Do you guys get donation through grants or any other initiative as like that? We do as well. Um, so we do meet draws on uh, Friday afternoons. Um, we do other events. We've done um, hike for hospice walk. Um, we do that once or twice a year. We have another thing that we do a few times a year. It's called Petals and Pebbles. Uh, and that again is like a grief walk where families can go and do rock, um, walks, um, through Port Moody. Okay. Um, another big thing we have is our treasures at Christmas gala that's coming up in November. And that's our kind of big to do event where all the proceeds, uh, go to, again, back towards the hospice care and towards our grief and bereavement programs. Mm -hmm. So why did you decide to work at Crossroad I, store? <laughs> I worked uh, previously, I worked at another uh, nonprofit and I really liked working there um, and getting an opportunity to work closer to home and within my community that I was born and raised in and help give back to Crossroads itself um, was a very awesome opportunity for me. I had a family member um, in hospice care for only a short time in 2019, not realizing that come 2022 that I'd be working for the hospice that provided my family member um, end of life care. Mm. So I'm curious about how do you price the items? I know right now a lot of people are in need mm -hmm. also. So thrifting is a great way mm -hmm. to buy clothing. Mm -hmm. And so how does that work? Are you guys still trying to keep it affordable or, uh, or accessible? Yes. Yeah. So we do get a lot of young families, new people living in Canada coming to our store or people who, you know, might be in between jobs or down on looks or people who just love the hunt of thrifting. Mm -hmm. You never know what you're going to find. You might be going in for one or two items and you're coming out with a handful of items you didn't know you need until you saw them. Um, so just that whole different conglomeration coming into one place. It's, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. And like pricing items, it's it's sometimes a guessing game. You, you want to price it low so the item moves and sells, but you also want to consider, like, think about that that money's going to the hospice, right? That's why I was wondering, it's, how do you price a, that? It's a fun game we play. It's like, okay, like both clothes are less than $20 and they go on sale half price several times a week. A mug, most mugs you'll find for one to maybe three dollars is a really fancy mug. We like to, you know, have items inexpensive and affordable for all, but still, you know, be able to support our programs. Of course. So tell me, what can we find in the store? So you talk about mugs, you talked talk about clothing, what else? It's more of a what can't you find in there. Okay. There's <laughs> adult clothing, children's clothing, baby's clothing, anything you find in your kitchen cupboard other than food, you'll find at the thrift store, jewelry, uh, collectible items. Every so often we come across items that we're like, this probably belongs in a museum or somewhere, not necessarily in a thrift store. Um, we recently had a handmade wedding gown that when it was donated, there was a letter saying it was made in the um, night, I think it was like 1910 or 1911. And so I know we reached out to a local museum to see if they're willing to take it because that's something that shouldn't be sold. That's something that has a story and a background that, you know, should be on display. So every so often you come up with 
things that have no, or you know, There's have no, no price, value, no price that it's not worth selling, that you've, you've, you've got to look at it differently and think about where you can put it. Every so often we have stuff that, you know, you call, you call the local RCMP, say, Hey, yeah. we have, we have like an RCMP outfit that got donated. Like we've recently had a few things like that, that come in that you're, you go, Oh, how'd that end up here? And that's half, half the fun is you don't know what's in the box until you open it. Mm. Do you have any stories for me of families and atrocities that you helped um, throughout the, the last few years you were there? And We've, in many ways, yes. Like there's quite a few of our staff members at the thrift store have direct connections to the hospice itself, being a family member that was there, being they were a volunteer there. Um, with our bereavement program, we had one person that started to volunteer because our bereavement coordinator thought it'd be good for that person to come and be a give back. Vol to volunteer and help them get through their grief of losing a loved one. And it's, um, it's cool to see because that person when they started was very quiet and shut down. And within a few months, seeing them come in for their shift and just be bright eyed, making a eye contact and really enjoying themselves. So we, you see a cool transition with people um, as they start out. We get a lot of students from high school that come in and want volunteer hours. And they're some of the most fun volunteers to have because they, you know, during their 50 minute break, they go shopping for themselves or their friends. Um, and we have a lot of volunteers that volunteer at the thrift store and a well um, at the hospice. Um, so they, they, they're pulling double duty for our society, which is very cool. Um, and some of our volunteers were created hospice, the Coming Crossroads Hospice Society. They were the ones who got together one day in a coffee shop and said, Tri-Cities needs some type of respite, some type of hospice care. And some of those people, 25 plus years later, are sorting clothing on a Saturday afternoon or Tuesday morning. So it's it's a very, very community, tight knit community. And there's a lot of full circle stories that come in and it's, it's very cool to see. Now I want you to elaborate a little bit more on the bereavement program. I'm thinking just probably some from adult and some also for uh, young yeah. like kids. So with our youth program, um, we have a counselor that can go to the school and meet them at the school so they're not pulled out of their classes or having to leave the school and they can do it, you know, at their lunch break or when they have time to do one-on-one -on -one sessions. We also have other times where we take them horseback riding or canoeing um, or do little sessions in groups where they will do jewelry or they do, I'll pronounce it wrong, as kitsjuku. It's um, where if you have a broken item, uh, say a broken mug, you glue it back together and paint where you uh, glue back together with gold. Oh. And that's just showing the repair of something, how you can take something broken and make it anew. It's a Japanese art. Okay. Um, so it's, yeah, it's very cool that um, both the programs for youth and young adults and adults was new. It's within the last few years and how successful it has become. Yeah, and I love the um, arts. We talk a lot about mm -hmm. mental illness and mm -hmm. uh, arts. That's definitely creating mm -hmm. a safe space to uh, to just be. And I think it calms our mind also. Yeah, and everyone's it's a big part of it, right? Everyone's art is different. Everyone yeah. sees it different and how they interpret their grief or want to show their grief or their care for their lost loved one yeah. um, is different. So it's, it's very interesting to, to and see. And you said animals also. Yes. They every, every so often will do the horseback riding out on Maple Ridge. And that's another connection. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, now, um, how can people in the Tri-Cities can support um, Crossroad Thrift Store? Uh, million different ways you can donate unused unwanted items mm -hmm. you can do um, you can go online and donate monetary funds through our website you can donate in store you can just come in and shop spend five ten dollars and shop at the store um, whenever we have um, events going on outside we have our treasures of christmas gala coming up in november we do our hike for hospice in may so there's very many Things. We also, again, the meat draws that we have um, throughout the spring and summer. 
I have done the hike for hospice.、Mm. I have done this. We walked, I think, from the community center in Port Moody and all the way to the pier in Port Moody. Yes, and、yeah. come back every year. Is slightly different route. Because... That was like a few years ago. I、yeah. did that. Yes, and it was a lot of fun. You guys make it very fun. So,、oh, and it's great. I have, my kids were very little at the time,、mm-hmm. and they were able to do it, which is it could definitely be a family activity.、Mm-hmm. And it was a beautiful day, so that always helps when the sun is on your side. It rained in the morning, but it was nice after. So、okay. that was the. I gotta say, I, that was a lot, a lot of fun. I did that one. My girlfriend,、um, her dad passed away, and.、Mm-hmm. Um, She invited us to do this、oh, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, in memory of, and that was really nice things to do for someone, and give back also to the other people,、mm-hmm. next people.、Mm-hmm. So, what's the hopes in the future for the thrift store?、Um, we're the little thrifter that could is what we like to call ourselves. We are quickly running out of space and growing out of our、oh, space,、okay. um, seeing how we can become bigger. Is always interesting to see what the future brings in our location or, you know, how we grow.、Um, it's the same with our grief and bereavement programs. They are fast growing. The demand is there, and now that the word is out and more people know about our programs and what we offer,、um, we're, we're slowly expanding. And it's very cool to see that the that we offer these services for free and that people are able to access them and. Mm-hmm. Thrift stores just keep going, and I know it's to help funding、yeah. the old machine. But、uh, so if、uh, if someone lost a lost lost a loved one,、yep. how can they reach out to get help and to be part of the bereavement program?、Um, so there's a few different ways. We've had people come in straight to our store and ask us, and we you know pass off、okay. business cards and pamphlets、mm-hmm. to direct them to our.、Uh, Program counselors, or they can just go straight to our website, which is crossroadshospice.org. All of our information is available there. Awesome. Well, thank you, thank you so much,、yeah. Samantha. It was absolutely a pleasure to have you with us thank today. Thank you. Thank you for what you do, because I know it can be、uh, it can be challenging sometimes.、Mm-hmm. A、space is a problem.、Uh, I think everybody's a little bit str- struggling with space、yes. these days. Yes. So thanks again. Thank you for having me. From the Tri Cities Community Television and myself, Genevieve Califive, thank you so much for joining us today.